In question 13, we are given a function. That function, f of x, is x squared minus 6x plus 18. We are also told that x is greater than or equal to 0, so positive, and we're asked to, in part a, take this function and rewrite it in the form shown. Now that's the completed square. Completing the square, we need to half the linear coefficient and put that inside the brackets with the square. But then we have to subtract the square of this. The brackets are important, because if you don't have the brackets, you'll square the 3 before you subtract it, rather than doing minus 3 times minus 3. We've still got the 18, and we then simply need to tidy up. This makes minus 9 with the 18, gives us a total of positive 9. And we've completed the square. We can state that a equals 3, and that b equals 9. In part b, we're asked to sketch this curve showing the y-intercept, which is point P, and the minimum point Q, and give their coordinates. Having completed the square, the coordinates should be immediately apparent for the minimum point. The minimum point's coordinates will be positive 3, positive 9. Inside the bracket there, we flip the sign. The way to remember that is what would the x value be? 3 minus 3 gives us 0. That's how we minimise this. So we have 3 there, which is the opposite in sign of that minus 3. So the coordinates would be... Point Q, 3, 9. Now you might notice that my curve has not extended over here. That's because x is greater than or equal to 0. And this is the negative part of the x-axis. We do need to label point P, however. Point P has coordinates of 0. And we know the y-intercept from the expanded form of the equation, 18. Part B, complete. In part C, we are asked, well, first of all, we're told there's a line y equals 41, which intersects uh, with curve C at point R. If I was to add this onto my sketch, you can now see the intersection. There would have been a second intersection here if it had not been for the fact that x is greater than 0. So, how do we go about solving the location of this? Well, it's like with simultaneous equations. y equals 41 and y equals this. So let's make this equal to 41 so that we can solve and find out the x-coordinate of the point R. First of all, subtracting 41 from both sides gives this. At this point, there are two methods that we could use to solve this. I'm going to show one of those methods first, and then just for interest, I'll show the other one second. The first method I'm going to use is the quadratic formula. The reason for this is I'm not going to try and do paired brackets because 23 is prime. We can only have factors of 1 and 23, and they cannot give us 6 minus 6 in any way. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. x will be equal to minus b. Oh, I'm sorry, that was meant to be minus 6. But minus minus 6. Plus or minus the square root of, again, b squared minus 4, a is 1, and c is minus 23. And we're dividing by 2 times a, which is 1. 
Now, putting this into my calculator, first of all, I've entered it with a positive sign, which gives me a third 3 plus 4 root 2. Pressing the change button, I can check that this is decimal value is positive. That's important because we're only going to have positive solutions for x. However, they asked for it in the third form. But let's go now and check the negative version. We wouldn't be expecting another solution that would work. This solution is given, but you can see it's negative. From our graph, we would only have expected there to be one solution, given the constraint on x's values being positive. So, now we have our answer. But what was the alternative method? Well, that was completing the square. If I start from this point, x squared minus 6x minus 23 equals 0. Completing the square, and then tidying up, that would give me minus 9, minus 23, minus 32. Rearranging. Square rooting. But we're not quite where we want to be, because we can simplify this third. Sixteen twos are thirty-two, but root sixteen is four. Excuse me. And we could check this to decide whether or not these would be positive or negative. Root two has to be greater than 1, because the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of anything bigger will be larger. 4 times anything bigger than 1 is going to be bigger than 3, it's going to be bigger than 4, so this would be negative if that's negative, so we can discount the negative and just take the positive. And that gives us the same answer as we had here, but using a different method. In this question, either method would have been fine. However, in some situations, you might need this if there's a problem-solving aspect or an extra unknown.